All right, we are live. Hello, everyone. Um, this is our third uh, for the day, our third course for the day, and I am excited to announce um, retired Chief Master Sergeant uh, David Satchel is going to talk to us today about the how behind a superior EPR. Uh, sir, the floor is yours. All right. I always just wanted to have like theme music when I entered a room or something like that. So this normally is one of my favorite songs. And so maybe that'll loosen you up a little bit. I don't want this to be too serious, but Bruno Mars is my guy. And so Ashley, thank you so much for having me in this session right here. I'll stop. And so, um, and so we'll go from here. And so quite honestly, um, this is one of those things that, that I love and I wanted to make sure that I shared any nuggets that have, was left over from the time that I wore a uniform nine, uh, nine months ago was the last time I put it on. And, um, and this is the one that, that people ask, can I either share my slides or, or have a session with them? And so, so what better place than with Ashley with this particular topic when it comes to writing? And so today, um, I don't intend to um, I don't intend to show you exactly how to write because I'm sure you may have some experience with that part. But I want to tell you how we write and why we write. So what you have on the screen right there is one five seven nine. That is my brainchild, um, and it probably. You probably are familiar with some of those numbers because they are with your your education levels, your training levels, and that's where it started. And you're going to say, "Where's the three? But uh, this is a leadership development uh, brainchild of mine, and so the start and the finish, and then the five seven your leadership development. And so, um, if you follow me, you can see that on the bottom right corner of my website. There, it's a uh, blogs of confrontations to leadership that. Uh, if you're ever interested, take a look, and this will be part of it. Uh, how do you make uh, the how behind um, superior EPR writing? So, actually, next slide. So, this is me, uh, David Satchel, and when he had hair, so that looks a little different now uh, in the top left of there, um, but I am the husband, father, and son, and big, big, ugly Eagle fan. Uh, I love to golf. I live in Florida and I am so proud to be an airman. And so, um, so now you know a little bit about me. Next slide. So again, um, there is no intent to, to go directly um, on, here's how you structure a bullet. The, the, the real important part is the why and the how. And so we'll talk a lot about philosophy and then we'll talk a little bit about mechanics and then very little bit about how to structure. Um, but it's gonna be, it'll all tie together when we get to the very end. All right, next slide. Going too far. Okay, so the how. The how is, um, is, is a philosophical um, a question, right? How did this come to be? And, and so I believe it's all very, very tribal. And, and so if you understand how do I connect, how do I connect my personal desires, my passions, my activities, my curiosities, how do I, how do I put those two together along and, and put them on the form so that it shows some of the activities that I would like to be involved with, along with all, of course, your your performance of bullets. But this is where a lot of airmen get stuck. They say, I want to be a soccer coach and why doesn't that tie in? Why is that a, such a big deal? But your tribes determine what goes on your performance report. I'll say that again. Your tribes determine what goes on your performance report. So if you happen to be a aircraft maintainer or if you are in ops or you're in an admin, your tribal leaders are the ones who agree 
about what goes on there and what disagree. Why? It's because they are the ones that are in the boardroom making assessments on your performance report. And so when you want to tie in some of the things that you're passionate about, that you are, that you, um, that you have desires and curiosities that you want to include, if they conflict with what your tribe and your tribal leaders believe are of value, then, then it will be in conflict. So what you value in performance and in self-improvement and community involvement sometimes is not what the tribe values. And so you'll have to understand that. We'll talk a lot about that in just a little bit. So since we're there, because I'm sure that no one has said tribe and EPRs together, if you ever have a question anywhere during this session, please just go ahead and uh, raise your hand or shout out. All right, next slide. So what is it that we value? Next. So what we value. And so what, other than your institute, other than the tribes, the institution values certain things. And this is universal among all tribes. And that is number one, that we value you being a master of your craft. And so that we will put performance above all other things. And so if you're structuring your EPR, you'll have to understand that part of the how, is that we as an institution value performance over all other things, performance in your primary duty, performance in your additional duties. And then, but it's not performance only, but it's performance first. And so you want, we value you being a leader and a participant in those, in all of those performance initiatives and that are involved the installation and how it functions. So we also value being a leader among your peers. And so, um, so that you are leading a team, that you are in a position of influence, that you have taken another step forward, that you are a chairman, a president, so forth, okay? We value leading your peers. We value as an institution that you compete or are awarded for awards. And, uh, and, and even better when you compete or are awarded for awards at, at an even higher level at the group and wing and matchcom level. And so we value those. Why is that important again? Because the how tells you what needs to go in your report. We value problem solving. And so when you are uh, an airman, an NCO, a senior NCO that solves problems, that is what needs to be recorded in your report. That's part of the how. We value an, uh, innovation and benchmarking. So setting a standard or taking a standard and, and busting it wide open innovation. We value you winning the winning and being awarded coins. I have a disclaimer there that for senior NCOs that get coins or awarded coins, when you write your report, it should never be the sole impact to a bullet. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but just know that coins are always good. Just know how a senior NCO records a coin then on their report, then they need to know that they have to record it in a certain way. And number one, it should never be the sole impact of a bullet. So we value working above your skill level, meaning that you filled in as a flight chief, that you that you filled in as a first in first sergeant duty, that you've taken first sergeant duty, that you filled in for the chief for X amount of days, or that you filled in a role that was your senior airman and now you're doing a staff sergeant duty. Those must, must be recorded in your EPR. And so it has to be clear that here I am senior airman, now I'm performing in the NCO level, saying that here I am as a tech sergeant and I'm performing the role of a first 
those are super, super important. And so we, we value taking initiative. And so that means I, I see a task and I know there's a better way initiative different than innovation but just going a different way so that you can say i can solve this problem and then the last that we value you living up to your core values and you communicating that in your report that integrity is shown in your report that service is shown in your report that excellence is shown in your report those all are are super important that you include those in the, in your report because if you don't, then it will show that you are you are only I will I'll call it a one trick pony. That's part of the how. We'll get to it in just another couple of slides. Next slide. Okay, so the how and how I record it. So that is, um, if you're looking at this quad chart, you'll see uh, four quadrants there and you'll see some circles there. So let's just, let's pay attention to the top left one, like the leadership verbs of inspiring, teaming, leading, organizing, driving, mentoring. These are all verbs that, that are tied to a senior NCO. And so when a senior NCO um, is performing in the lower left quadrant, where they're using different verbs, supervised, fixed, identified, coordinated. That means now that that particular CNCO is misaligned negatively with their strikes. So let's take it one step further. When the CNCO is performing in the lower right quadrant, they are completely misaligned negatively with their strikes. So when a supervisor did participated or volunteered with or and assisted with, when you record that on your EPR, the, the value of your report begins to diminish. And so when if you were in, if you intended to uh, to assist someone with a particular activity, Please do, by all means, because especially if that's something you love or something you're charged with, it probably should not make your report because otherwise as a senior NCO, it will diminish. So let's reverse that particular topic. Let's say airmen, which is in the lower right quadrant, which they are expected to do, participate, volunteer and assist with, now they are inspiring or teaming or leading. Now they are possibly they're positively misaligned and their value increases tremendously. So if you look at the gray circles, let's look at the one on the, the left, top left. It says the in this circle, it shows a NCO that is performing at the senior NCO, uh, mostly at the senior NCO level and partially at the, at the NCO level. That's super positive. And so you wanna make sure that the verbs that you choose to use on your report are aligned with your stripes or positively aligned or positively misaligned. Same, that same circle shows a senior NCO mostly working in their own, at their level, and then sometimes at an NCO level. Let's look at the circle on the bottom right. That shows a, that shows an airman mostly working in their in airman level, and now, and sometimes performing at the NCO level. Again, positive. But it also shows an NCO that partially works at their own, at the NCO level, but quite a bit performs at the, at the membership level. And that has a negative value. And so make sure you pay attention to the verbs. The verbs are increasingly important as you write them down and you record what, your, what activities that you were part of. So again, I'll put some disclaimers in the red bars you see there. It says, some ex these are just examples of verbs and I would absolutely use these ones, but there are others that you can use. Just make sure that they're synonymous with the ones that you see here. And so there's no bad verb 
They're just situation, situationally based and they could be misaligned with your stripes. So you have to be careful in which the way you, you, wear, you use your verbs. All right, let's move on. All right, this is really cool part. And, and not everyone says this all the time, so I'll break it to you. This chief says to you that the documents get you promoted, not you, not the person. And so what I mean by that, that means, you know, Ashley's a great person, good parent, no one cares. They don't care that uh, if you help the elderly across the street, no one cares. It wouldn't matter if that you, you recycled, no one cares because it's not that person that's going to make it into the boardroom. It's going to be the documents. So if you go back a couple of slides, which I'm not asking you to do, Ashley, um, it is if you don't have to, if you don't, if you if you use the verbs that we choose, your tribal leaders are expecting. You can go back to the regular. If you use the the tri the verbs that we're asking you to use, it will make sense to the board member. And when you don't use the verbs that you're supposed to use, your tribal leaders will then go, oh, wait a minute, this is misaligned and it will, and it will start to lose value. So remember, this is why it's so important to understand the how, because you don't enter the boardroom, the documents that tell your story into the boardroom. So, so these, so I said that, I said that you have to tell your story. And so sometimes you will see, let's say aircraft maintainer, and you'll see on their report as you read it down from the top to the bottom, it will say, uh, fix red ball, repaired X, re removed and replaced, you know, uh, aircraft panel. And one after the next, it says fixed, fixed, fixed. And so when you do that, the value of your report begins to diminish because it doesn't tell your full story. But here's a better story for a maintainer. It would be the maintainer the, that does fix, the maintainer that led a group of three to, to teach them how to uh, repair a particular jet. The trainer that brought in a group of folks that and taught them troubleshooting, the innovator that that deep dived into how to how to follow the schematic and and learn a different a different task. So it's important that you tell a full story of you, not one that I called earlier a one trick pony that fixes fixes fixes. Or the same, if you looked in the operations realm, you would see someone that says they ran 250 checklists today or, or in these this period of time, and then they'll run checklists, run checklists, run checklists. Although that is important, what you do day to day, how you record it, then shows you have less value. So let's move on to the next. And I would like for you to key in on the individual versus team. If, please go back to the last slide. And so the individual and team, that's bullet number three. And so individual awards are super important. And, and you're gonna hear it from me and you'll probably not like it, but individual awards rival team awards. But if we follow that sentence, it says individual awards carry more power. However, the absence of senior CEO impact on the team is a noticeable fault. So a senior CEO that's showing that they've had all these awards, but in their same reports show they have little to no impact on the whole, then those awards begin to show, you know, self-service. And so the how behind that is if you are winning rewards, especially at the CNCO level, it is also showing how you're bringing other people up. And so you can't just have award after award after award and not show that you're bringing others up. So be cognizant of that particular piece of the how because those will really start to hurt you or negatively impact you when you have awards. Okay. Impact strength. 
And so if you pay attention to the bottom left quadrant right there in the yellow box, um, here's one of the big faults of writers. Uh, it is the impact. And so impact should always tell, compare, rank, and set records. And I always tell my people that work for me, try to find a way of putting a number in the impact area. Even if that number is zero or a hundred or a percentage or a ratio, if it shows this is what it looked like now, uh, before and this is what it looked like now, do your best because what it does is qualify or quantify the value that you put into the work. So tell, you should be able in the impact area, tell how to do that, tell how the work was done and how it achieved a certain end. But if you right here, you'll see that it says 95% logistics departure rate. So if you're in the logistics area, they'll understand that very well, but you have to understand what your tribal leaders believe is good. And so let's just say the tribal believers, tribal, tribal leaders believe that 90% um, is where that, that number should no longer be, uh, be lower than. So you have to be cognizant that 90%, 95% is a solid impact uh, number. And so if you were to have 88% logistics departure rate, you may not want to take credit for that because your tribal leaders believe that 95% and above or 90% and above is what's important or really good. Or making a comparison in the impact area. Compare where you were before till now. And so making data, data-driven impacts. So, and then ranking yourself against other large organizations, like organizations, or uh, within your, your MAGCOM or within your wing, if there's similar people doing the same function. Those are very, very important. Again, like I used to teach my particular NCOs that were writing or senior NCOs, make the comparison or put a number there. Find a way to take, and take a number and situation us uh, situationally put it there so that it will it will show how you have added value to that particular function or activity or exercise and of course how you set records so take the time in the impact area if you set a record it should show that we were first or we were that uh, no one else has ever done this that you benchmarked it and so uh, those are important pieces to the impact because if you don't put that in there, it will just die off. So this is what I see in impact areas quite often. You'll see did particular activity, Secretary of the Air Force's number one priority. Quite honestly, not an impact. That was not the impact. And so you'll see that or you'll see did said activity dash dash and then it will say coined. So the coin is not the impact or it's not what you add value to the organization. And so you have to spend time, instead of using coined, find a way to tell, compare, rank, set records. Cool, let's move over to the bottom right of that same, of the same slide when it talks about self-improvement. Because um, in the bottom, in the bottom left where the box is, it's mostly geared towards performance. But in the self improvement area, this is one of the noticeable faults with it that some of our uh, NCOs and CNCOs use as part of their impact. And that is, they'll use the GPA as the impact. So they'll say, attended Embry Riddle University, look, took X a number of classes. And then it will say 4.0 GPA, exclamation point. How many times have you seen that? And so tribal leaders look at that and they go, well, what value did they add to the organization? And so, so the better way of putting that would be went to Embry-Riddle University, X number of hours in that class, and then took that particular lesson and now uh, increase the project 
the project timeline or decrease the project timeline by X number of days or hours, right? And then somewhere in there, you take credit for your GPA because those that's important and take credit for being graduating magnum cum laude, that's important, but don't allow that to be your impact because your impact is what value you've added back to the organization. And that's very important to do. All right, next slide. Okay. All right, so if you were to ask David Satchel to, um, to review your records so I could see what, what the value that you've added in your reports, this is how I would do it. I would look in your EPRs or in your, in your, um, your job description and I would see how many responsibilities, different responsibilities that you've had and that you've, um, that you've changed your role, that your role has increased. And that over year, over year, over year, that it's changed at some way or during that period of time, right? I would look to see that you have done the minimum, which is CCAF, and that you, the minimum, you've done your PME that's, uh, that is congruent with your rank. That's super important because if you didn't, then your record begins to diminish because those are just minimums and you get nothing extra because you completed your CCAF. So I would tell you that, right? And so a lot of people say, well, I got my CCAF. We expect that you did. We expect that you, got your, that you completed your PME. So don't take too much credit into that. We expect that a tech sergeant has gotten their CCA up. And so because of that, when an airman, let's say an A1C or a senior airman achieves their CCAF, that is an achievement compared to when an NCO to a ma uh, so staff sergeant to a master sergeant receives their CCAF. Maybe you don't like it, but it's the truth. So education is not a requirement, but an education really makes your record look better. It shows that you are you are doing some, taking some effort at self improvement, and so when you when you graduate with uh, with honors, then that's a plus plus. And then when you synthesize your individual and team roles and performances, then it's plus plus plus. That's really good. You take advantage of that, and that's why it's so important in the impact area that you have a value a value-filled impact when it comes to your self-improvement bullet. Citations are important. And so the how behind citations, that is when you, we as a, as a tribe and as an institution expect that every single time that you leave your base, that you have a decoration that's congruent with your rank. And when it's not there, it's a noticeable fault. So if the institution says that strong, uh, strong leaders or airmen in general, um, when they leave their particular assignment, that they get a decoration, that's what the institution normally, uh, uh, normally does, then we should see one at every single base. And when it's missing, it's extremely noticeable. So, and then um, uh, we notice that um, when I'm reviewing your record, I flip straight over to the back and I wanna know what your senior, what your senior rater says about you. And so because of that, the how. The how says I put my strongest duty performance bullet on my senior rater's line. I'll say that again. Strongest duty performance bullet on the senior rater's line. So let's say that you were the president of the top three or the five, six, even though that that is a, a remarkable achievement, the senior rater, that's not a line for the senior rater. Your strongest duty related bullet on your, the senior rater's line. If you have stratification, that's important. Of course, we all know that that goes there. So we don't have to go, go there. We can talk about that later if you're interested. 
Um, and your individual and team awards, they all have to go there. <clears throat> um, and then that your report, they always show leadership. Because if we went back to the slides from the past, it would say, as an institution, we value leadership. And so if we value leadership as a tribe or an institution, and you have to make sure that your record reflects that you are leading because that's part of the how. And that now the next part of that is the whole airman. And that is we value that you have participated in, led or been uh, uh, contributed to your whole airman effort. And that is that you led in the environment that you're in, the community or the installation or in families, so forth, right? And then plus, 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 if you were, if you were voted in or elected to be in these esteemed positions within those, within those groups. And then that in your self-improvement, that your self-improvement, that you trained somehow, you trained yourself somehow, that you've gained some experience somehow, that you've been certified somehow. And then those are when those are big wins for you. So if I were to review your records, it should show these. It show these should be your story. One EPR should show the all of these bullets that are on this single slide here. And that you should gear every EPR to look and reflect this particular slide here. Next slide. Okay, so here's an opportunity if you had any questions for us to, for you to ask here. Any questions? All right, cool. So let's just move on to the next one. So let's start with the end. And the reason why we should start with the end when it comes to bullet riding is because your tribal leaders are at the end of the line. And so when I say tribal leaders, I mean the people that do the function that you do. So if you're in, if you're in an admin role, that your, your admin tribal leader, your chief, your senior master sergeant is the one in the room that is deciding the fate of the particular or the promotability rather, because the fate is a little bit more. Uh, that the promotability of the individual. So now you're writing to someone that's within your tribe. And so the word choices that you use, the activities that you're involved in, all will be assessed by your tribal leader. And just be careful that your tribal leader is not your wing commander, because the wing commander could, could be someone that's outside of your tribe because likely he or she is a pilot of some type. And so if you are in a different field, your tribal leader is someone that's in your chain, in your, in your lineage. But also know that your tribal leader is also outside of your generation if you're an airman in the airman tier. And so sometimes if you want to be cutesy with the way that you write, maybe your tribal leader doesn't see that as that cute. Or if you're trying to uh, write in a manner in which the tribe doesn't normally communicate, some, sometimes that could conflict with how they understand the tribe and its language. So just be, have knowledge of that. So, um, if you can focus on bullet number two, it says that um, the charge from the chief of staff of the Air Force, this comes out every single time um, that there is a, uh, a board. So the, the chief of staff will declare on several pages, I would say two or three pages, and say, this is what we want to see out of senior NCOs or out of chiefs. And so as your tribal leaders are in the room, and if they have any confusion about what they're what they're seeing, they will call in a an administrator to for the testing or for the board, and very almost invariably they will say refer back to the chief's charge. And so 
Um, this is an important document, and now it's public. My early times in the Air Force, it was not public, but it has been public over the last eight to ten years. And so you um, you have to have you have to understand what the tribal leaders and what the chief of staff says is important. So of course, almost every time, number two is always on there, and it says job performance was the most important. Right. Next one, I paraphrase this, but it says in determining the best quality for promotion of all the factors, job performance are the most important. So out of all factors, job performance is it. So let me tell you a little story. I had a, I had a NCO and I was a chief in 2015 and he was one of my sharpest senior NCOs, master sergeant. And it was time for report time and stratification time. And when I saw, when I got to see his report, I saw that it was riddled with non-duty related bullets. Seven of the 12 bullets were non-duty related. Although they were strong, they were not connected to what the person was hired for. And because of that, I said, hmm, I called he and his supervisor to the office and I said, hey, you're, you're a remarkable airman. I love what you do, but this does not show or tell your story. And we need to see what you do on what you've been hired for. So I'm going to give you a week and I need you to go and, and fix this to show what you're doing on the job day to day. And so that week came by. And next thing you know, I received this document and they, they changed a couple of them, but not enough. And it forced me to not, to not have him as my number one strat, strat or to recommend him for the number one strat. It's because it, could, it didn't show that on his primary duty that he was performing that and that was the most important. So the record showed that the non-duty related uh, activities were more important than his primary duty. So beware of how many bullets are shown or that are documented that are non-duty related. So, and then the rest of your story, as you can see in line four, that it shows that you, the person of competence, of leadership, uh, that you take your job and, and that you have a, a, a deep wealth of knowledge within your job and experience. Um, and then while you're at it, that you've achieved some type of award for it, um, or you've competed for that. Next slide. Okay, pay no attention to the bottom of this, but what I want you to understand is that uh, the line number one, huge takeaway, huge, huge takeaway. If something significant happened prior to the last five years, then it didn't ever happen. So the only way that you can identify um, those activities to uh, record those activities is to make sure that they're in your, in your citations. So today, start today. If you have a significant achievement, it, it needs to reflect in your in your citations, in your achievement awards, in your accommodation medal, in your in your MSMs, they have to be there because after five years, they never happened. That's a real important takeaway that I want you to remember right there. Okay, next slide. Okay. So again, we're starting with the end in mind because of course it's important if you've seen Oz like I did when I was allowed to be a board member, then I learned that, I learned that, wow, this is how they wanted me to write. I wish I would have known that 10 years ago. And so now I'm gonna show you what I learned too late in life in my 19 year mark that you should now know early on in your career. And that's the how, that if you look at line number, number seven, it says words matter. So when I showed you the slide of the quadrant of, um, of uh, verbs, just remember 
those words matter and your choices in words are very, very important. So in line number four, leadership matters, job performance due in deployment leadership, describe those, those are real important. This is all coming from the board president after a particular um, a board. So like for instance, senior just came out, you'll see a week or two later that the president of the board, it's normally a one-star general, will list all the things that, that, that he or she saw during the board and what they thought was important or what was amiss. So um, um, let's look at a couple there. That your records need to, to be right. And so when they're not right, what you do is leave your tribal leaders to decide what that means. Because of course, invariably they don't know who you are. And so they're, they're gonna have to fill the gap with their experience to say, hmm, this is not there. Should I assume it's there? They cannot. And therefore they'll say, maybe it's because they're hiding it or because they just overlooked it. And then it almost always looks negatively upon the person. So the same is when you leave out in your, in, your, in your bullet writing, if you leave out that you were part of a particular activity, when the tribe believes that you should, then the tribal leaders then get to decide, oh, is this something that was supposed to be there? Did they miss it? And it will always look negative. So uh, when I mentioned to you that the senior raider's bullet should be your strongest duty related bullet. When you write that some self-improvement bullet in that line, then it leads the tribal believer, uh, tribal leaders to believe, is this the strongest bullet that they have? Is this what the senior raider thought of the individual? So be careful of how, where you put particular bullets because those all matter. Um, let's look at another. Um, um, the last one, and that is, there's absolutely no discussion. So as a board member, um, after I got to meet and greet the person that was the tribal leader that was sitting next to me, who was going to board records with me, we're looking at the same records. And after the first hour or two, we are no longer talking to each other about anything. And Lo and behold, we have nearly the same scores of each of the, uh, the particular records to assess. What does that tell you? That means that the tribal leaders kind of look at the same level of communication activities and functions the same way. And so you need to communicate like the tribal leaders and so that when they, they understand your work, They'll go, yep, that's there. And that's what I expect. That's what they're expecting to see. Ooh, that's great that that's there. So let me give you an example of that so that makes sense. Um, aircraft maintenance uh, chiefs value the Knuckle Buster Award or the Group Level Maintenance Award. They value that almost as high as when a wing NCO of the year. Those are super important. And because of that, the tribal leaders see that particular award that it rivals many of the other awards that other people see. And so because of that, you have to be careful about what you're writing to or acknowledge that that is significant in our tribe and it has to be acknowledged and that it, that it rivals all other activities. All right, let's move on. Next slide. I threw this in here because if there is a senior master sergeant or if there is a master sergeant that's going to be watching, uh, this is one of the slides that I sent my chiefs when I was a command chief. And, and that, because, there's, because their EPR only has five slides on it, uh, I told them these are the kinds of themes or competencies that I would want you to write to. And that is you, the communicator, you, the innovator, you, the, the, the person that develops your airmen or the team builder. It's a little wonky the way that EPRs for chiefs are written. And so um, 
by writing them to these themes, then it makes sense. And then the tribal leaders understand what they are looking at. So then the expectation from a commander that would hire them based off of their chief reports, they'll see that person and their whole story. Really important. Okay, next slide. All right, so here's an opportunity before we go back to the start to ask questions. Hi, Julie, how you doing? Do you have any questions? No, sir. I know I just Not put you moment. a video show in there, so it's cool. Is this all making sense to you? Yes, sir. Did you see any ahas there at all? Um, I did. I am, I'm um, an air reserve technician here at Dover. Um, I've been in 37 years. So oh. it's always good to hear news perspective. And so that's why I wanted to um, to join in because I have 91 reservists and a lot of first time EPR writers. So all okay. of the extra training I can get to provide training. So this has been good, sir. I appreciate it. Awesome. Very cool. Awesome. All right, uh, Ashley, let's move on to the next one. All right. So let's go back to the start. And these are clear and I don't want to spend too much time on that is you have to do your homework. You have to do the feedback. You have to review to make sure that you are you are putting the right information on the documents. Right. Also, that um, the word choices that you use on a particular airman that um, that that is a mediocre performer, that when you take the words from the quad chart and you use them. Are those exactly the story that you were trying to tell? That's really important. If they had a, if they have a record that has several write-ups and you didn't intend for them to, uh, to show them as, this, as this high performer, you have to be careful in how you write because the opposite could happen uh, based off of your intent. And so, uh, acknowledge what's in their record before you intend to show or highlight this person as it as the strongest performer in your in your facility in your function so forth and make sure that you have facts we talked about that in the impact area of finding numbers numbers rival anecdotes so by using words like some or all the time that but if you can put percentages and ratios and actual factual data, that's really important, and that your tribal leaders understand those percentages and ratios. Next slide. Chief, we did get a question from uh, Facebook Live. I put it in the chat because I didn't want to interrupt you, but the question is, oh, does nominations, I'm sorry, uh, does nominations for MAGCOM awards matter? They, they do so much. You know why they do? They, they matter because, um, because that you won at the wing, because that you, you, were, you were submitted from a wing. And so that means you were the best of the, of the people that were, of the airmen, of the NCO, of the senior NCO that was, that was pushed forward to the, to the, um, to the MatchCom level. And those are super important. And sometimes we'll leave that out and say, oh, I didn't win. But guess what you did win? And so that's important. And the reason why nominations and, and awards matter is because it's another, it's another way of stratifying. So let's just say it's NCO of the year. So NCO of the year says, out of all the NCOs at this wing, I am the number one. Of, and that's, of course, what? thousands, correct? So out of, the, out of all the senior master sergeants on this installation, I am number one, right? And so um, it is, when you see that through your record, it shows that you have this glide path that is up and to the right. And so um, that's what you wanna see in your record when uh, the tribal leaders are looking at the record, they wanna say sustained superior performance and sustained superior performance is a glide path that is up and to the right. Sometimes it's up with a dip, with a stumble and to the right, right? And so continue to put those on there because they matter about, uh, they matter to, 
to the tribal leader when they show that you've been nominated to, to even a higher level outside of your installation? Good question. Okay, next slide. Cool. Here's one, one of the mistakes that I made early on when I was a master sergeant, um, and that is to not be married to my riding. Uh, Ashley, if you can get that slide one more time. Um, so when I was um, when I was writing, I, I thought I did really good. I was the the writing that I was doing was was um, was tending to be positive according to my to my bosses, and in particular Mike Bobbitt. Uh, he was my who was my supervisor at the time. Um, he goes and he says, "Hey man, this looks like crap," and I and I was I was a little taken aback by it. <laughs> Because I had been writing for so long, but I had just realized by when he said that this was like crap, that I had reached my ceiling. I had reached the, the top of how I could write. And so at that point, I needed to be, you know, some, some more development or some education or some training or some help in writing you know, at a, at the next level. And being married to it, then you you take it on as your baby. And then when someone makes a correction to it, then you you take it personally. I don't know why that happens, but as a chief and when I was writing as an NCO, when they when they came back with all these scribbles, I'll be like, man, this was perfect. And and no, to them it wasn't. So that's important that you know that your tribal leaders are going to help you through that. And so that you have to understand that you know, here's some, here's some ways that I could learn to communicate that same, that same activity differently. And so don't get too married to it. Uh, the other point to that is that your, your writing is as good as the last person evaluating it. And so usually that's someone in your tribe, but sometimes then it goes outside of your tribe. And remember your wing commander is not in your tribe but your tribal leader communicates with your wing commander. And so you just know that, um, that when you're writing, that, that someone there within your tribe is trying to make you better. And so take on the suggestions and the recommendations of the tribal leaders so that they can help you write in a better manner. Okay, writing styles change. They change during my time. Uh, um, sometimes we use cutesy words, but if you have a generation gap between you and your tribal leaders, be careful if you're trying to be cute or trying to astonish them with, um, with uh, big words. So sometimes they're unnecessary. Um, I'll, I will say this to you, um, quintessential, using a word like quintessential on your report, never, never had any value with me as a board member because you put that there did not change what I thought or did not raise the value of the performance of this particular airman or NCO. So you just be careful, just go ahead and stick to here is the leadership verb, this is what they did, and here's the impact in which they, uh, this is the value that they added to, to our organization. Um, also, in the part of the how, and this is goes without saying, but I have to say it, that you have to um, use the dictionary. You have to spell check. And when you don't, it's a noticeable fault on the report um, because that tells the tribal leaders that it wasn't important enough to, to write, um, to make sure that it was spell check, that the spelling was correct. That's important. Okay, and that the tribal leaders, if they all believe we use one line bullets, then you have to use one line bullets. And so sometimes you'll say, well, I can do it this way. And still though the tongue and quill allows me to do it X way, true. But if your tribal leaders have an expectation that it's done in a particular way, you have to follow what the tribal leaders, how the tribal leaders function and understand the world. Okay, next slide. Okay, I wanted just to pick out one item here, and that is, um, yeah, so these awards, and I think I mentioned it a little earlier though, that your awards 
are not part of your permanent record. And that's, and I think that's obvious. So make sure that when someone wins a significant award that it's translated to their decoration. It's super, super important because your decoration is the only one we'll see all the way back to your, to when you join the service. Otherwise the EPR is at five years, we no longer see them. And so they they just didn't happen. And so if you wanna see a glide path that is up and to the right, the only way that we can see that that person was the, the airman um, senior, I'm sorry, um, Airman Leadership School um, uh, John Levito winner and NCO John Levito winner and Senior NCO John Levito winner. And they had this amazing glide path that it just didn't start here, but it started way back there that makes sure that it makes the decoration. All right, next slide. All right, so uh, I highlighted in blue, this is the most important thing that you'll do. Um, maybe that's hyperbolic, but, but we understand that the reason that we write these reports is because someone in your tribe is gonna make an assessment on them that determines their promotability. So somewhere in the top two, three uh, things that you do as a supervisor is this particular writing. And so when you're writing and you are putting in particular, uh, part using particular verbs, just know this all leads to an individual's promotability. And so this is why, even though it may be a little hyperbolic, it is that we have to make sure that this is done right because it leads to some, the goals of some particular element. And so, you have to follow the tribal communication and you have to make sure that you're using the words that your tribe understands. Um, just remember that, that this doesn't come natural. These are words that are stylistically that we, we never used from grade school till now. And so um, no one's natural at this, but you become really good after, at it after a while. So much like the previous slide is, you know, don't get married to this. You'll learn how to do this. It becomes an, becomes an art and then you will, you will figure it out over time. Next slide. Yep, next slide. All right. Um, before we get to the mechanics piece of this, so let's um, let's uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna take a look on Facebook Live too. We have um, we don't have anything on Facebook Live, so if anybody out there um, in the chat has anything that you want to talk about. I'm gonna give them a second to type if they want to type, okay, Chief? All right. Let's see. I am getting a lot of messages like, uh, this is a great brief, so seems to be going well. All righty. If they do, uh, I'll... Uh, Just jump I'll... in anytime. time, it's okay. All right, geez. here we go. All right, next slide. All right, so um, there's four performance levels that we want to go through. Go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and build that out all the way out. Two, three more, right there. Okay, so there's these uh, performance levels that the tribe understands at the membership level, supervisory level, management level, and leadership level, okay? And each one of them stylistically um, are are uh, communicated in a certain way. So hit the next slide, please. For the membership level. So for the membership level, if you're writing in the performance area of the EPR, that you're using verbs and words that are synonymous with what you see in the, in the job performance area of this, of this slide right here. So at the membership level, this is tactical in nature. They perform normally considered airman level contributions, right? That if you go back to the quad chart that they are volunteered with, they participated in, they fixed, 
and so forth. They did. They DID. They did something. And so at the membership level, you want to be using uh, words that look like what you see here in the job performance area, right? And then in the self-improvement area, you should be synonymous with these, that they collect something, that they are uh, part of an education opportunity, that they took, that they were, that they attended Chief Satchel's bullet riding class, right? Those kind of activities that they did something, okay? Same you'll see down here in the basic community involvement area of the particular uh, EPR that they've helped with something, they assisted, participated, much like in the job performance area. So be thinking about how do you stylistically write for, um, for an airman or someone that's at the membership level and then tie it to the quad and say, okay, this is a uh, airman through senior airman. Did they lead the lead? Did they lead something? Now they're working outside of their quad and they're positively, right, misaligned, right? Next slide. So for the, for the supervisory level, okay? Same if you, this is a tactical and operational in nature. They normally consider NC level, NCO level contributions. And if you looked at the quad chart from early on in the brief, we talked about led, supervised, um, um, uh, fixed, um, uh, corrected, those types of verbs that you're using, right? That you identified and fixed, right? Or you solved something. And so when you, when you use those particular ver uh, verbs in here, take a look at the, how they're synonymous with the ones here in the job performance area. Same in the self-improvement, that, that they are taking larger milestones, that they're taking more college classes, and then that they, uh, um, that of course, that they've completed their CCAF degree, and then start looking at um, uh, them being able to um, take on other responsibilities or leading self-improvement activities, okay? larger accomplishments within the self-improvement realm, okay? Same in the basin community involvement, looks much like in the job performance that, that, you are, that you're taking part of an activity, that you've led a small team within it, that you've taken charge, that you've done something outside of your normal day-to-day, -day, like in the honor guard or so forth, right? Those all begin to look plus, plus, plus in your record. Part of the how. All right, the next one. At the management level, right? And so um, I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to split hairs on management and leadership because they'll, they'll look a little different. Just the verbs will be, uh, they will look much the same, but the verbs will be different. And so management is a person that organizes, that they, that they are supervising, that they are ordering, that they are they are solving. And then in leadership, they will see that they um, inspired, that they teamed and so forth. So the, the work is the same. There's no splitting of hairs here, just the verbs are different, right? And so that when at the senior CEO level, you should see a, a little bit of you as manager and a lot of you as, as leader, okay? And so a self-improvement area, that you completed a significant education and training goal. So let's let's talk about that a little bit. As a person that's seen Oz, that when I look at your record in the boardroom and I see one report after the next that shows that you took three credit hours in a single year, then the value of that activity starts to diminish. So. Um, and then over five year period of EPRs that you're, you're working towards that same degree in that five year period, and it looks like you're making no headway or there's no degree completion, then your, um, your effort in the self-improvement begins to diminish as well. So I guess what I'm saying is get the degree after, <laughs> get along with it, right? because um, what you will find is that a board member will look at that and they will see 
okay, there's 15 credit hours and there's 24 of them and there's another 24. So all of a sudden you start to see the number that adds up to a degree that doesn't show the degree. So at some point you have to show the baby, otherwise your effort begins to diminish. Okay, and then back to the slide here where it says in basic community involvement, always much like the job performance that you are now part uh, in basic community involvement, that you're part of organizing one, that you're part of directing one, that you're part of planning them and supervising them. And at the point that you're involved in these uh, basic community involvement activities, when it shows that you've participated in, remember the bottom right quadrant of that, then it starts to show that your efforts diminish. So part two of that is if you want to be part of that activity, uh, whatever it is, um, then please do. Don't stop it for that point of your EPR. Uh, if that's what you love, that you're passionate about, that you're curious about, then you continue to do those things. Just know that you're communicating to your tribal leaders and sometimes that particular activity should probably be left off if it doesn't show that you're congruent with your stripes. Hopefully that makes sense. The next, next slide, please. Leadership level, much like I said, it's almost very, very similar to the management level, just different types of verbs and um, that your effort is operational and strategic and your expected your expectation of you as a leader. So when the tribe sees a leadership level uh, EPR come before them, they're expected to see the job performance, self-improvement and base involvement that looks like these. I'll take a second if anyone has any questions about these four levels. Okay, great. Let's move on to the next slide. So we're we're at the almost at the very end. So let's let's talk, let's show you how we capture those. And these are very, very simple, but we can we can talk through them, okay? So at the membership level, you show that a person did lower right quadrant, they changed the aircraft tire, and that it, that what the result is, they had they did it in a half of the normal time, and that the impact for a membership level is that they returned that aircraft to to service. So all fantastic for a membership level um, individual for and. Uh, E1 through E4, okay? All really good for them. So when they look at it like that, the tribal leader expects to see something like this, all good. Next slide. Same bullet, but now we've taken up the next level and that is at the supervisory level. Now we expect that person to be leading a small team, particularly like two or three people. And he supervised a, a couple of airmen or an airman who is removing R2, removing or replacing the aircraft tire at the launch time, that the airplane took off, and that now the impact's a little greater for that supervisor. Now they have 12 of 12 of those aircraft departed for the exercise. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so next one. Same activity, same activity, but now at a different level. At the supervisory level, they r 2 uh, the tire because it received a red ball, red ball meaning that they identified an error and they needed to jump on there and fix it right away. And so here we are removing and replacing the tire after, uh, after troubleshooting. The next level, it becomes now a management level result that they sourced last jet available for a mission, meaning they were have to maybe particularly have to remove from a can from a different airplane and put it onto this one so that this aircraft could take off on time. And so now at a leadership level impact where they rallied the team for this aircraft to take off on time, this is how you would like to stylistically see a report go uh, from, from the supervisory level to a leadership level impact, okay? You wanna see uh, a particular activity that you don't get to determine what you do. So you say, here I am, staff sergeant, and I go, okay, I removed and replaced the tire. 
And now I had to, because of that, I had to go source this, uh, source the tire for to make sure that it was able to take off. And then bam, I rallied the team, the three people that were with me so that we can get this aircraft taken off on time. That's what we wanna see in bullets. Okay, awesome. Next slide. Okay, so um, I this is a, another part of this that I really didn't want to, if, and I'm sorry, Ashley, I'm gonna ask you to skip through a couple of them. Just skip. Next one, please. Next one, please. Next one, please. This right here. Uh, no, go back. Right here. Okay. So um, this says awards on there, um, but um, if we were to line by line an EPR and in the boardroom, it would look much, much like what you see that is bracketed in red. And that is, is the are the verbs that are used congruent with their commitment level? And that did it show the actual, did it show what that individual did? Did it show what they did? And did it show the impact or the value that it showed back to the organization? That's really important, right? So remember, instead of using uh, coined by the command chief for CEO and CO, it should show in a qualitative and quantitative way that this is how we add value back to an individual or an organization. Super important, okay? That you acknowledged an achievement, so you did a function, the results were good, and because of that, I was the NCO of the year or quarter or month, right? And that is, that when it's innovative, that it shows that they showed initiative, they deep dive the particular issue, and they figure out a way to do it in a contrasting, in a contrasting manner, meaning in the impact you contrasted. Now it was was two days, now it's only a half day. Really important because the what you did do, now you're showing that you improved the organization or people. All right. Okay, I think that's all I have for, for the how. Okay, I'm seeing a question here. I'm the section chief at the base, but there is no room for development growth at the foot. Section chief at the base, but there's no room for development growth at the flight and command level due to position being what? Or how do you recommend to continue my leadership development? Should I step out of the squadron and look for other opportunities? Okay, so I, I said that to myself. I don't know if all of you heard. So let me read this out loud. A uh, particular person says, I am a section chief at my base, but there is no room for development uh, growth at the, at the flight and command level due to positions being newly filled. What or how do you recommend to continue my leadership development? Should I step out to the squadron and look for other opportunities? The answer is yes, absolutely. Find other ways so that you can continue your glide path that's up and to the right. Because you know, there's so much so, there's only so much food at the top of the tree, you're gonna have to sometimes fly to a different tree. And so um, you might find yourself having to look for other developmental growth in, in other trees, so to speak. And so, and those are all really good. And matter of fact, sometimes it even looks better because it shows that you are um, impacting across that you are expeditionary in, in, a, in, a, in a lack of a better word, that you're showing um, your worth in other areas outside of your normal tribe. So yes, absolutely, you should take on any opportunity in or outside of your facility that you can. And then how you credit that, it will be the, wor the words that you choose to use is that sought activity in X location, um, learned this particular function, and then dash dash uh, improve my organization by increasing performance by 29%, okay? So make sure that you're using the, that impact is super important when we come to bullet writing. Great, good question. 
You got another one too. I've yet to write an EPR for myself or for an airman. So I'm curious if EPRs are based on integrity if no proof can be shown. The word is yes, there is. Um, they are based off of integrity. And then in my experience, and um, as both a person who's seen Oz and a chief and a command chief, sometimes you can question, um, you can question some of the activities that a particular person was involved in. So let's go back to the academic part of this. And that is, uh, we use the verbs on the quad chart and it shows that a membership level verbs that are did, participated with, assisted. But when you see that same airman and that they are leading, designing, and overseeing, then uh, the tribal leader should probably go, what? How could they have done all of that if there's too many of those particular verbs? And I failed to mention that as part of the brief is that Sometimes they can look negatively because a tribal leader will go, there's no way possible that a, at the airman tier that they're performing all of their activities at the, in the supervisory, I'm sorry, in the management and leadership tier. So um, the answer to your question is yes, um, it's all based off integrity and they, it will look oddly out of place when there's too many of those uh, verbs that are not congruent with their strikes. Yes, good question. What'd you think about that question, Ashley? Interesting. Um, thinking back, you know, uh, whenever I was writing one of my first DPRs, I never, I really trusted my airmen, <laughs> I guess even though one of them did get a reckless driving ticket right before deployment, but that's another story. But, um, I really did trust them and I believed what they said. So I had faith that they had integrity, but it doesn't hurt to have, in my opinion, um, so, some proof if you need it. But, right. you know, I try to trust as much as I can. Try. Right. Yeah, so I lead based off on trust alone, and so sometimes to a fault. And uh, but sometimes your hair should stand up and say, hmm, "This doesn't look right, right?" And so sometimes you just verify that that is it, because you're 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 part of this process um, that leads to the tribal leader, right? And now they are they're looking at you, and they're saying, "Hmm." What does this say about the tribal leader? What does this say about the people that were in that in that process, right? About the supervisor and so forth. And so um, we found that when we're in the boardroom, where you know particular generals were signing for you know the senior NCO records, but they were poorly written, and they were or they were in some cases not truthful. And then you can go, what does this say about the signature of this particular general? But more importantly, what does it say about the tribal leader or the chief that really put that in the hands of the general, probably who has very little knowledge of what that particular CNCO did and is trusting the process and said, okay, if my chief hands this to me, they trust that the chief has validated that particular though that particular EPR. All right, good, 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 good topic. Any other questions? Let's verify. Yes, ma'am. Let's verify. Nothing on Facebook now either. Well, okay. So, so thank you. I'll, I'll go back to the beginning. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening. I appreciate your time. Uh, I'm, I'm open for any discussions that you ever have. If you ever want to just send me an email and say, hey, what are your thoughts about? Um, I got lots of time to have thoughts in my retirement. And so if this was helpful to you or you saying, what do you think about this particular oddball situation? I'm open to sharing what my thoughts are, especially having 
been throughout the entire process from airman to command chief and then a board member. So sometimes it's helpful to understand that whole line that leads to your promotability.